Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com just coming back off vacation trying to get back into the grind. So today we're going to be talking about filler wire size in TIG welding and then also I'm going to be talking about a, a new TIG cup that I'm going to be selling on the store. I'm, I'm finished testing it now. I put it through a lot of a lot of welding and, and I, I like it. So I, I test stuff before I put it on the store. If I don't like it, you never see it on there. So I'll save that to the end so you won't have to watch that if you don't want to. But we're talking about TIG filler wire sizes today, and, the, and the, the question is, the question is, how do you know the best filler wire size to use for a certain application? And there really is no definitive answer, but I'm going to give a few tips. So let's get into the video right now. All right, first thing I want to do is show the effects of using different different size filler wire at 90 amps. So I'm not going to change the amperage at all. I'm using a 11 gauge cold rolled steel here. And first up is 045, that's 1.1 millimeter rod. And notice I'm feeding the rod in there, it's feeding nicely, it's not really disturbing the puddle when it slips into the puddle, it's not balling up, and it's also not chilling the puddle. So it's just making a nice little freeze line, and things are going along pretty good. Keeping a fairly tight arc and keeping the hot tip of that rod shielded with the argon. And that, that gives me a pretty decent looking bead there. Alright, next up we're going to go up one size to 1 16th. 1.6 millimeter. Same thing basically. Not a lot of difference here. So it's still doing a nice job. I'm, I'm keeping the uh, the hot tip of the rod shielded. When I add it in the in the puddle it doesn't really change things a whole lot or freeze things a whole lot. But now I go up to 332nd, 2.4 millimeter. And that's where things start to get just a little bit squirrely. It's doing okay to start with but it's a big it's a big heat sink that rod at 90 amps is a big heat sink and you can see there it's starting to make the puddle swim around a little bit when I dip it in there and that makes you try to chase the puddle sometimes and uh, it's just a little bit too big it's gonna exaggerate it here a little bit with the even bigger filler wire here this is a 1 8 3.2 millimeter and that's a telephone pole for this for this amperage you can see it just drawing the heat out moving the puddle forward because it's chilling the puddle and it just raises the puddle up so that's that one was kind of way too big at at 90 amps all right let's look at a, an example now of, of, of an application on that when you might want to drop down to a smaller wire there are times when you would want to confine a bead size like have it be really small not have it go all the way up to the corner on a joint like this this is 11 gauge steel the same thickness I was welding at 90 amps this is probably about 95 amps but if you don't want to go all the way up to the corner and you want to use low heat, dropping down to an 045 wire will help you do that. And there are applications that require this where you can't go all the way up to a corner for some reason or another. And then there are applications where you need to go all the way up to the corner, in which case going up one size filler. In this case I went up to a 1 16th and that makes that happen pretty easily. Now here's a, here's a situation that's completely different. This is lay wire technique on a socket weld and I'm using a 1 8 filler at about 125 to 130 amps but using lay wire and weaving like this is a whole different scenario. It's, I'm not going in and out of the puddle so I'm not uh, experiencing any any chill factor from it dipping in and out of the puddle. It's just always in the puddle. That's a very common technique for pipe welding. For stainless steel like this 1 16th 1 1.6 millimeter oftentimes dropping down a, a size lower even than you would use on carbon steel helps keep that heat down, prevent melt through if you don't have purge on the backside, and to prevent distortion and just to get started and, and get going quickly. And then there are those occasions when you just don't use filler wire. The, the application uh, tolerates just a, a fusion weld like this. And at the same time I'm using that big cup that I was talking about just to show you the, the, uh, the coverage capability of it. Little fusion welds with no filler like this are really common on stainless steel food service type work, kitchen work. You can see the, the large shielding envelope there uh, on, on the pattern of argon that that thing puts out. And we'll do the same thing on stainless steel, stainless steel the 16 gauge here real quick. A really common joint for like again kitchen equipment would be something like this little lap joint without filler metal and does a really good job on that especially when you need to stick the electrode out pretty far. Let's take a look now at the effects of using different size filler wire on something thicker at, at higher amperage. So this is a big chunk of stainless steel welded to some carbon steel using 309 filler rod. And to start with I'm using a 332nd diameter for the first pass. And then for following passes I'll, I'll swap to a smaller filler wire size so you can see the difference. Now when I'm adding this 
this 332nd rod in there, and I know it looks really like a really big rod because I've got the puddle magnified. It has an effect on that puddle. It really chills it quite a bit, and all that does is it just produces a more distinct ripple. The ripple are, are freeze lines where the rod chills the puddle. So not, not good or bad, it just is what it is. But now I swap to a, a little smaller filler, filler rod size, same, same uh, type filler, 309. I'm adding a little more frequently and pushing just a little bit of rod in there because it's a pretty hot puddle. And I get a less distinct ripple. And then as the piece warms up a little bit, things will, things will get e even uh, less distinct as far as the ripple goes. And this is a nice close-up of that unique diffuser screen design from M. Furick on Instagram. These, this cup is called a FUPA 12, for anybody that's interested. So this is another pass on the same piece. I let it cool quite a bit, but it's a little bit warmer than it was the first time around. And uh, you can, now you can see the dipping of the rod hardly has any effect of chilling the puddle. 150 to 160 amps using a, a 1 16th rod and now the ripples are much less distinct and of course I'm, I'm kind of getting in the groove a little bit here too on uh, you know being able to be more comfortable and propping in a more comfortable way and so that's helping as well again I'm doing this on a positioner this is uh, probably one rpm sometime some somewhere around there and speeding it up here so that you don't have to watch the whole thing but you can get an idea of, of how things are going here and how I'm propping, actually propping my hand on, on a little stand that I made for, for doing out of position test pieces. Like I said, things are getting a little bit better as I get more comfortable and more used to it. I don't do a whole lot of positioner work like this, so every time I do, I've kind of, you know, I need to shake the rust off a little bit. But once again, this is 1 16th filler wire, and ripples are getting finer and finer. And the, the discoloration is hardly there at all because of the because of that big cup. On multi-pass welds like this, you know, having having very little oxidation, and that's what discoloration is, is oxidation having very little makes the makes the following passes go on that much better. So this is a total of six passes on this particular joint, and uh, welding over top of each pass was not a problem because there was just hardly any discoloration at all. All right, so here's the quick summary for carbon steel. For sheet metal thicknesses, filler wire size is gonna be equal to or a little bit less the thickness of what you're welding. For stainless steel, a lot of times, one size smaller than you would use on carbon steel works good for sheet metal thicknesses. For aluminum, if you're having trouble getting the wire to the puddle before it just balls up and, and melts, you either need to tighten the arc up or just go up one size in filler, in filler wire. Now, how do you know when you're using too big a filler wire? Well, for sheet metal, if it, if it disturbs the puddle and it looks like it's cooling it down too much, or if the rod sticks when you add it, you know, oftentimes drop down a size in filler. You don't want, for, for sheet metal stuff, you don't want that puddle to change drastically when the wire touches the puddle. That's a sign you're using too big a filler. There's, there are exceptions to these rules of thumb, but there are, these are just some guidelines for you. All right, well, it's commercial time now. So the rest of this video, it's only about 30 more seconds, but it's going to be talking about this particular cup that I tested uh, called a FUPA 12 cup, and it is not for everybody. It's for people that need really good shielding or really long stick out. For, it's great for motorsports type applications, chromoly cluster joints and things like that, and it is breakable. It's made out of Pyrex, and that's why it comes with a titanium shield. But you can see this long stick out like this and the good shielding, and sometimes you need a long stick out. And with this cup, you can extend the electrode an inch with no problem at about 25 CFH. If you don't have to extend it very far, you can get by with 20 CFH, which is really not much more than a regular number eight gas lens requires. So it's really not a gas hog. Comes with a titanium shield, which is recommended for using uh, because it's a Pyrex cup. So if you drop it on the floor, it's pretty much going to break. But the titanium shield gives you a, gives you a lot more chance of it not breaking, and doesn't really interfere with anything. All right, well, that about wraps it up for this week. You can learn more at weldmonger.com.